Sometimes children have questions, not because they are fools, but God is calling them into greatness. You understand? When your child asks you a question, don't throw them and say, oh, that's it. There is a reason. Abraham, when Abraham began to reason, and what he did, he said, this, I'm going to kill these idols. He got his stick and he hit all of them and crushed them down. That is not in the Bible. Please don't misquote me. I am saying that is in the book of Joshua. And when he crushed all of them down, he left the one big one which was standing tall. And he got a big stick, a big slasher in, in his hand and he put it in the hands of this one. So when his father comes and said, who has destroyed my idols? Abraham said, you see this one? Don't you see he has a stick in his hand? He's the one who... And he said, I said, how can this thing destroy the others when it is an idol? He said, but you told me that they are, she, they are the ones who created us. Now his father did an investigation and he found out that Abraham is the one who destroyed his idols. And from that point, Terah sought to kill his son Abraham. And Abraham left. And that's how he met some... That's how Nimrod, Nimrod was, uh, was the king then. Nimrod was one of the uh, wickedest king, if such a word exists, in that time. And at the time when Abraham was born, I understand according to the book of Joshua, please, we are yet coming to the Bible, which the Bible cross, uh, cross references. According to the book of Joshua, when Abraham was born, exactly the same thing that happened when Jesus was born happened. There were stars, there were moving of stars, and, and they're saying, oh, there was a mighty man who was created, and his name was Abraham. And when he came, Nimrod was a king, he said, I am told the king is born in your house, Terah. Tell me, where is that boy? And they told Terah, this king is going to kill your son, Abraham. So Abraham having, having servants, I mean, Terah having servants, Terah brought the child of one of the servants and gave him to Nimrod. And when Nimrod held the child, boom, he hit the child on the ground. And Terah said, oh my God, they was going to call and kill my son. So from that point, Terah started hiding Abraham from Nimrod. But when Abraham rebelled against his father and destroyed his idolatry, Terah said, I am now going to call Nimrod for you. So Abraham took off for his life. Around that time, that's when God called Abraham. I'm calling you to come out of your own people. Leave your people. Follow me and I will show you a country where you are going to live. So Abraham left things, not be, left his country, not because things were good there. Because God had seen his, a call on his life he had to leave a number of times. We have to leave brothers and sisters. Leaving does not mean physical. What I'm saying, leaving is spiritual. You must leave certain things that you are hold on to, especially the way we confess when we are in a problem. Can I hear at least a small amen? Say amen. I must leave the way I confess. I must leave the way I behave, the way I say things when God has opened up your heart and given you understanding, the scripture says understanding will keep you. Understanding will save you. So in Genesis 15, after these things, I, I encourage you, let me tell you the truth. I have always told you the truth. On the pulpit here, we share, we minister to you less than 2% of what you need for your spiritual lives. You, if you think you are going to benefit only from my teaching and you think that's what you're going to depend on for a week, I am counseling you change your ways. You must on your own. Can you say on my own? Can you say on my own? You must on your own deliberately set aside time and study God's word. No one is going to study it for you. Take time and study. Go back, check the book of Joshua, which I'm telling you. You say, where is it? It is there. You are in the information age. You cannot get it for yourself. Okay, before you go to the book of Joshua, study God's word. Because I picked interest in it, in it because they were saying, what is this book? Why, did, why was it not included in the, in, the, in the Bible? Let me tell you one of the things that excited me when I read it there. They told me that uh, Enoch was a preacher of righteousness. As he was, who was translated? I think it was Enoch who was translated. Not so. And the Bible said that as he was preaching on the crowds and the yelling, and then uh, the Spirit of the Lord came and... <laughs> And raptured him. That's what is in the book of Joshua. It is not in the Bible. Does the Bible agree or yes? Yes, it agrees. 
And one of the other things say that when, how did Cain kill Abel? Abel is keeping the flock and Cain is growing crops. And that book says that one day the cows of, 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 of Abel broke the fence like the way my father's cows used to do at night. They went and ate the crops of Cain. But because Cain had been hiding evil and wickedness in his heart against his brother, that was a trigger. Can I get you now? How come your cows are eating my clothes? You see, when you keep grudge, when you keep bitterness, when you keep a grudge in your heart, we are talking about God's language school here. When you keep a grudge in your heart, when you keep it and it is there, it is there, let me tell you, the devil will give you an opportunity to express it. In the case of Cain, Abel's cows broke the fence and ate the crops. And that's when he said, I'm going to kill you. And eventually he killed him study the Bible yourself. The pastor is not going to come to your houses and teach you the Bible with you and your children. You've got to do it yourself. If you cannot do it yourself, that's up to you. You'll not be able to blame. Here we give or we share. We are also learners. So we are all together with God teaching us. The Lord is our teacher. The Lord is our helper. The Lord comforts. The Lord strengthens us. And so when he strengthens us, we also get a bit to strengthen you. But even you, you can strengthen yourself by the grace of God in his word. So, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. This time he was still called Abraham, saying, Fear not, Abraham. I am your shield and your exceeding great reward. And Abraham said, The Lord said, Lord God, what will you give me seeing I am a childless? And the steward of my house is this areas of Damascus. I don't have a child. I am, my wife Sarah has not given birth. She's so old and what do we do? I, you are telling me you are, you are going to be you are my great reward. What are you rewarding me when I have no child? Our topic is God's language school. I must keep emphasizing. How did Abraham behave? And Abraham said, Behold to me, you have given no child, and lo, one born out of my house in my hair. Verse 4, And behold, the word of the Lord came to him again, saying, This shall not be your hair. <laughs> when you have con convinced yourself that for you, you will not get married, that is the conviction you have. God is saying, It shall not be like that. Amen? When God has said it, the mechanics and the mechanisms and the systems of having you to come to pass, leave it to God. And when God starts it, just cooperate. And even when in the middle there you can wave Abraham, the Bible says Abraham did not stagger on his face. But then we read somewhere that the wife convinced him to do a wrong thing. The scripture says Abraham did not stagger. And the wife yet convinced him to do it. It is as if God winked at it. Because there was something that God was focusing on. I am not here to tell you to keep staggering. But I'm saying if you fall down once, please don't stay down. Wake up again. The vision still stands. Amen. And run the rest to the end. Now, this shall not be your hair. But he that shall come forth out of your bowels shall be a hair. And brought him abroad. And he said, look towards heaven. And Abraham looked up to heaven. Can you able to count the stars? I believe Abraham said, no, my Lord, I cannot. If you are able to number them, then he said to him, so shall your seed be. And he believed in the Lord. And he was counted to him to be a man of righteousness. So when God told Abraham, said, count the stars. Look at the Actually, scripture says that if you look at the stars of heaven and you're able to count them, and you also count the seas of the shore, then that is the number of your children. Abraham concluded, I cannot count them. Now, I want us to go to Genesis chapter 22. Because when God had blessed Sarah, she gave birth to a baby boy called Laughter. And that baby boy was called Isaac. Isaac means laughter because it was something that was really impossible. But it was something that only was possible with God. Is there anything post impossible with me? God asked. No. All things are possible with God. And it came to pass after this thing that God did tempt Abraham and said, Abraham, and he said, behold, here I am. So now we are looking at a man whom God has blessed with a child, Abraham. Please remember that 
uh, God is trying to test Abraham with something he loves. I learned a lesson from there. God will not test you, will not ask you to give you something you don't love. God will not ask you to give you to give him a coat which is torn because you are tired of it. God will not ask you um, to give him a goat whose leg is broken so that when it is moving, it is as if it is praising God and, and dancing in the choir. No, 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 no. He wants the one which is whole. He told Abraham, here it is. He said, take now your only son, your only son, your son, your only son, Isaac. Remember, he had two sons already. He had Ishmael already. And he had Isaac. Why is God saying your only son? Is God misplaced? No. God knows what is. He is knowing there is a huge connection that Abraham has with his son Isaac. And Isaac is a child of promise. Because God had told Abraham that through this one, the whole world is going to be blessed. So all the hope, all the energy, all the future, all the savings, all the investments, all the riches, everything that Abraham had, he believed that the son is going to be a heir. You understand? Hello? Hello? Confession. What we say in the midst of situation is important. Whom you love and get you into the land of Moriah and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell you. Let me move fast forward. The place which God later chose where to offer Isaac is in the modern day Israel in the Temple Mount. Not only on the Temple Mount, but actually on the place where the Holy of Holies was located, that's where Abraham, not the Holy of Holies, that's where Abraham was to offer Isaac. And that is the same place where David, when he had sinned against God in the days when he numbered Israel, that's the same place which God chose, he said, go to the threshing floor of Onan. And that's the same place in this same very area. Very specific one when God, just, God chooses something. Very specific when God just chooses, God is choosing something. And Abraham went up early, rose up early. He didn't wait for the morning to come in the morning and sandaled his ass and two of his young men with him and Isaac, his son, and he craved the wood and the burnt offering and he rose up and went to the place which God had told him. What is going in in the mind of Abraham? I want you to picture this. That God has told you to sacrifice something that you love and you believe it's the only thing you have in your life. I don't know what it could be. For Abraham, it was a son. The only one whom the whole world, through which the whole world will be blessed. I cannot imagine what was going on in Abraham's life. Remember previously, God had told him that God is going to give him a child. But when there was a wavering of the wife, the wife convinced him. Eventually, what happened, happened. I don't know whether when God talked to Abraham here, whether he shared with the wife. I really don't know. The, wife, the Bible doesn't tell us that that was the case. I'm imagining that Sarah wouldn't have accepted. I'm imagining that Sarah said, the only one I have in my old age. Ah, uh, you go away with that God. I am not seeing that in the scripture, but it seems like Abraham kept it a secret. I don't know. Maybe he shared with Sarah and Sarah agreed. Actually, there are two possibilities. Either he shared with Sarah and Sarah agreed or he didn't actually share at all. Or the third possibility is that he said, no, me, I will go. Nonetheless, I believe it was not easy for Abraham. I believe it cannot be easy for you. Something that is so dear to our hearts. I've seen parents give their children in marriage and they are crying. They tell me they are crying for the tears of joy. I think so, it is tears of joy. But I think there is that feeling, my son, my daughter, she didn't have gone. Yeah, but he has to go anyway. This was death. Abraham had been instructed, offer him as a sacrifice. Sacrifice was a daily routine in those days. That's why Abraham as a young man, I mean Isaac as a young man, he's saying, my father, you have the knife. I am cutting the wood. I am seeing the fire and the cause of fire. Where is the offering? Let's go on. In verse 4, on the third day, it was not a short journey. This was the third day. 
Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw a place at a distance. And Abraham said to his young men, Please, abide you here. Stay with you here with the donkey, the ass. And I and the young man, Isaac, will go the other side. And then we shall worship and come back to you. Do you know he had not even told them that he was going to sacrifice his son? They knew that sacrifice was the normal. So the three of them, I mean, the, the company of them, they are moving to do what? According to Abraham, he's telling them to worship. For them, they knew we are going to worship him. He knew it was his son. Sometimes when you are in charge, you do not need to reveal the whole truth. Some things, some experiences are between you only and your God. Those who know it can say amen. Thank you. Certain experiences, let me assure you, they are not for public consumption. They are not for even the entire group that you are traveling with. Sometimes it's between you and your God. Abraham knew God what I told him and he's moving. And instead of revealing the secret to Isaac, he tells the servants, please you stay here with the donkey and with the, you know, with, with yourselves. Me and Isaac, let's go and we shall worship and do what? And come back. What a man of faith. I would love to have that one. What a man of faith. I would love to have that one. I mean, it's like Daniel saying, I mean, the, the Hebrew boy says, Lord, even if he does not save us, let me assure you, we will not bow down. In other words, we are doing this not because we believe that God is going to save us. It is, our, it is within us. It is within our spiritual DNA that we cannot bow down to idols. Abraham said to his young men, abide you here with the ass, and I and the Lord will go down and come again to you. I mean, just imagine. Just imagine that. Somebody is sentenced to death and you have been given authority to kill him. You do not wish to kill him. But because of your love and commitment and sacrifice and the relationship we have with God. Let me tell you, God will not... The thing that you put your heart most on, God is going to ask for it. I have said this one before in this pulpit. If there is something that you have put above God, and I believe God was testing Abraham... You know, was tempting Abraham. Temptation is not sin, ladies and gentlemen. When you are not tempted, you have not sinned, the Bible says. Jesus was tempted. Abraham was tempted. We are tempted every day. How do we get tempted? Through your, the way you are thinking. The way you are talking. And Abraham took the wood and the burnt offering and laid it upon his son. And he took the fire in his hand and the knife and they went both of them how? Together. Now they have left the other company there. Now the relationship is closer. And, I, and, and I'm Abraham and Isaac is saying, but that day maybe he didn't want to tell me the truth. And Isaac spoke to, his, to Abraham, his father, and said, Dad. And he said, here I am my son. And he said, behold the fire. I have the fire and they have the wood. But where is the burnt offering? Aren't we going to be ashamed before God? What is the answer that Abraham gave to him? My son, the Lord will provide. That answer, it, it, it's like froze me. It should freeze you if you think what's going on in Abraham's life. My son, the, the Lord will provide. He is not he's going to kill his son. He's saying he's... The Bible, that's why Abraham was the, the, the scripture says that he believed God and he was credited on his account for righteousness if you have a spiritual account it needs to be credited for righteousness for believing in God and Abraham took a wood and burnt offering and laid it on, the, on, on his son like I've already said and he took fire and, in his hand and a knife and they went both of them together and, and Isaac spoke to Abraham his father and said my father and he said here I am my son and he said, Behold the fire, behold the wood. But where is the lamb? 
for the offering. Verse 8, read with me together. One, two, three, go. And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself a lamb for an offering. So they went, both of them, together. When you do not know what to say, you say God is provided. Amen? Don't say, I don't know what we are going to eat today. God will provide. You do not need even to know. Hello? Abraham knew that God had told him, kill your son and let him be sacrificed for me. And the son is asking him a question. Where is the lamb offering? What would you have answered? Let me ask you a question. I, I honestly don't know what I would have answered. I, I don't know. I think some of us would have said, me, I don't know. This is God he told me to offer you. I don't know. Don't you think? I don't know. What could you... There's something that God, you are trying to bend the words. Abraham gave the right answer. The Lord will provide. Another time when, when God was asking Ezekiel the prophet and he takes him in a valley of dry bones, completely dry without life. And he said, can these bones live? <laughs> Do you know the answer that Ezekiel gave? What did he say? He said, you are Lord knows. Sometimes that is a better answer than saying, I don't know. I don't know is a good one also. But I think God, Ezekiel said, only you God knows. And God told him now, speak like this. I tell you, he spoke until those bones became a military force. Amen? And that military force was able to take over the nation of Israel. So, Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both together. Verse 9, and they came to the place which the God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. Hallelujah. He's ready. He's taking and he bound his son Isaac and laid him on the altar of wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and he took a knife to slay his son. And an angel of the Lord called upon him in heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, I am here, my Lord. And he said, let not your hand be on the young boy. Neither do you any harm to him. For now I know that you fear God. Seeing that you have not withheld your son, your only son from me. And God and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him was a, a ram caught by a thicket. A ram caught by a thicket the horns and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him as a burnt offering instead of his son and Abraham called the name of the place what? Jehovah Jireh for it is to this day in the mountain of the Lord the Lord shall provide and shall be seen. What are we saying here? Confession is important my confession has to align with the will of God even when I don't feel it you don't even need to feel it. Relationship with God is not emotional. Relationship with God is spiritual. Praise the Lord. So in the mountain of the Lord, and Abraham, I cannot imagine what, what was going on in the life of Abraham. You have a son whom God has told you. The scripture says that Abraham believed, and he believed that God, either two things, I think I've heard scholars say it, that Abraham believed in two of the things in this case. Either God was going to stop him from killing his son or he was going to raise him up from the dead. Hallelujah. We have a man who believed in the resurrection of the dead in the Old Testament. Some people believe there is no resurrection of the law of the people in the Old Testament. I am telling you the Bible is rich in those subjects. The people of God understood when you read Daniel, they will tell you that there was going to be a trouble, a time of trouble, and he talks about the resurrection. But what was going on in the life of Abraham? What is it that you love in your life more than your relationship with God? Is it the money you have? Is it the business that you do? Could it be the children that God has given to you? Maybe the life that has been given to you it looks pretty. Some people say they are cute. Eh? 
Is it being cute? Whatever, whether it is cute or cute or cute, whatever it is, let me tell you, you can lose that life if you do not learn to put priorities right. I strongly believe that Abraham loved God with all his heart and he could do anything that God had asked him. If there is anything that God would do for us to get saved, if there was anything better than Jesus Christ, God would have given it for us. But because there is nothing better than Jesus Christ before God, he did not for, he said he could not withhold his son. And he decided to give him us to save us. How much more with him shall he not give us how many things? All things. But our confession must be right. We must learn to state the things we want. The lesson of Abraham, we learned many things. We learned that Abraham perhaps did not know what to say. But I think the Spirit of God quickened him and said, you say the Lord will provide. And the Lord provided indeed. Sometimes when you don't know what to say, the Lord is in control. Sometimes when you don't know what to say, the Lord is in control. If you do not know how to pray, you just thank God. Sometimes when you have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and things just thank God. Just thank God. Thank because there's one you know, in all circumstances, God is good. God is good. Whether you have died or not. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Your death does not change God. Until we come to understand that since some people say, But God, how could you allow this to happen? Please, God help me never to question you particularly on anything concerning me. The Lord knows what he's doing. The Lord knows what he's up to. The Lord knows what he's doing. We cannot corrupt him. We cannot correct him. But sometimes he say, come and reason with us. If your sins are as red as crimson, I'll turn them as white as snow and I'll remember them no more. But our confession must be a right. We must learn how to use our tongue and I thank God that we are learning by the grace of God. Say amen to that. You and I are learning on what to say. Many times we are caught off guard by what somebody has told us. You know you cannot be able to do it. You, you won't be able to be. Then you also believe. No, but the scripture says, no, 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 no. Believe and change your confession. Abraham believed. Abraham agreed with God and he confessed with Christ and he confessed with God. He was tempted but out of that temptation the Lord worked out good. Praise the Lord. Can we stand on our feet? I want us to conclude here and declare how God good is, how wonderful the Lord is to ourselves. I give you a chance to speak. I give you a chance to believe like Abraham. I give you a chance to trust in the God of Abraham, to trust in the God of Isaac, to trust in the God, the creator of heaven and earth, to trust in the Lord our God. Confess some things. Confess some good things. Confess some nice things. Confess some things.